learning how to build up the confidence to start your next big project. It's a challenge many, many times to start projects, to kind of get going and get momentum. And a lot of time, you know, getting yourself to start is, is half the battle, right? It's just, you got to get going. We procrastinate all the time to get away from the fear of failure. But if you never start something, you're never going to be successful and you're always going to fail. So starting is huge. And what are some techniques that you can use to kind of take a daunting project and put it in motion? The first secret is to divide big projects up into smaller tasks and start with something simple. So here's an example of releasing an album. You know, releasing an album can be an intimidating thing. And just the enormity of it is enough to give your paralysis, if you will. It's that classic not knowing where to start that keeps a lot of people from taking action. So you break your big project down into smaller tasks. So maybe start by choosing the songs for the album. It's a place to get started. Then maybe decide on the single and maybe research where you might go uh, to book studio time and, and to do the project and so on. If you start making a list like this, you know, any one of these tasks, <clears throat> excuse me, can be broken down into even smaller steps that you can use as a to-do list for, you know, your daily list or your weekly list, however you organize your time. So instead of saying, oh, I know I need to release an album, but I, I really don't know where, where to start, you know, it's intimidating. Instead, say something like, okay, today I'm going to sit down with my band and I'm going to listen to the songs we've written already and we're gonna plan our recording sessions. That will put you in motion. Here's what it might look like for a crowdfunding campaign when you break that project down. You know, crowdfunding is very time consuming, but could be incredibly rewarding. But many people never get to it because they're just intimidated by it and they don't know how to start. So here's a list of things that you could do to approach a crowdfunding campaign by starting by choosing a platform. Are you going to go with Kickstarter? Are you going to go with Patreon? Are you going to go with Pledge Music or something else? Here's what it might look like for crowdfunding. When you start a project, here's a trick. Ask yourself, what is the easiest no-fail thing I can do right now to kick this off? It doesn't have to be you're going to complete the thing today. It's just, how do I get going? How do I get started? So you want to start with something that's so simple, stupid, that there's no fear of failure to keep you from taking action. You know, maybe you're trying to write an email to your fans and you can't. You're staring at the blank screen. So just start writing a word that describes the feeling you're trying to convey. Something as simple as that. And then ask yourself the question again, what's the easiest no fail thing I can do right now to finish this email? You know, most of the time, just getting yourself to start is enough to build up the momentum to keep you going from there. It's a very simple technique. There you go, secret number one. Secret number two, let's talk about finishing projects, which is equally as challenging. Here's how you can get over that mid-project slump and motivate yourself to finish. Finishing things can be very daunting and hold a lot of people back. So here's an example. You know, a lot of times we have a, a perfectly good song that we keep putting off from releasing out into the world. We keep tweaking it and adjusting it and revising it, editing it, sometimes for years. How many of you have done this? Are you sitting on songs that you don't you know, you just don't think are, are are there, quite there yet, right? Type it into the chat if, if you've been in this place or if you're in this place right now. So, here, so here's my advice on finishing projects. Stop waiting for perfection. As a musician, you're constantly learning. We're all learning. We're growing. We're honing our skills. So something you're proud of today might honestly look like crap to you in the future because you're gonna evolve. And that's why it's so dangerous to aim for perfection because it's a moving target that's gonna forever go upwards in your career, right? You're gonna get better and better and better. So take this example. 
you're going to benefit way more from something that's out there in the marketplace, even if it's not perfect, than you will from something that's sitting on your computer. Releasing songs can grow your audience as more people discover you, and that means you're going to have even more fans waiting for your next song or your next tour. Completed songs, albums, crowdfunding campaigns, merch designs, whatever it is like that, all of those things can make you money. And you can get that money coming in and you can use that to fund your next project. In contrast, what's a song sitting on your, your computer going to do for you? Nothing. And chances are, you know, if you put that song the way it exists right now into the market, nobody is going to notice that little thing about the song that you're not happy with. And, you know, at least you're going to start getting some feedback, which is so critical. That's a key premise of the mindset of a musical entrepreneur that we teach in the new artist model. You're going to be way better off finishing, putting something out there and learning from that. That way you can be better the next time and the next time after that, even if you fail. You're going to learn. You're going to learn so much more from people if you put your tracks out there and you see how they respond to them than if you just sit in your room refining, refining, editing, tweaking, being afraid, and wondering if it's good enough. So the next time you're working on something, give yourself a deadline and don't move it. Deadlines can be incredibly compelling. They're frightening, but they're, they work. If there's no hard date, you're always going to find more things that you can fix and more things that you can improve. So sometimes people announce their release dates to their fans, and now your fans are going to hold you accountable for hitting those dates. The momentum that you can acquire from setting a deadline and hitting it, it's going to make you feel so good, and it's, get, it's going to get you really motivated for your next project. You're going to have momentum. You're going to feel good about yourself. And more importantly, you're going to start getting feedback. Now, I'm not saying don't release, you know, a bunch of garbage out into the world. I'm not saying that. I want you to release quality work, but don't let the pursuit of quality hold you back. On to secret number three, how to focus your energy. You know, learning how to focus on the things that'll make the biggest difference in your career personally and ignoring and or delegating everything else. This is literally the formula for creating more hours in your day. I told you in my emails that I would tell you how to create more hours in your day. There is a formula for this. To start with, if music is important to you, if your career is important to you, then you need to treat it like a job. And the first thing that you need to do is to block off some hours in your calendar each week to focus exclusively on your music. Don't just wait around until you, you know, quote, have some time because you're not. You're not going to have time. Life gets in the way. You need to make time for your music. You need to take it very, very seriously if you want to get ahead. I want you to create your own reality by acknowledging that music is important to you and setting aside some time each and every week to work on it. Put time in your calendar for your job, which is music. Even if you got another job, treat it like that. Here's another technique. And this might sound a little counterintuitive, but the key is to do less but better. It's better to focus on fewer things but to do each thing really well than to do a lot of things halfway. So here's an example. You know, you can get so much more accomplished on social media if you put a lot of effort into becoming a master at one channel, let's say Instagram for, for now, than you would if you tried to maintain a presence on eight or 10 social channels all at the same time. Why is that? Well, if you focus all your energy, let's say on Instagram, you can go a lot deeper and become a lot more proficient and go much farther on that platform. You'll have the time to really engage with your audience, which is what it's all about. Well, that's what social media is all about. And you'll have the time to really get to know how the system works, how the algorithm works of whatever platform it is that you're on and how you get found on that platform. And you know, that engagement that you'll get will take you a whole lot further than spreading yourself thin across six or eight social channels, and really not getting in any engagement anywhere. So don't waste your time. Instead, focus. So how do you decide what to focus on? You know, a lot of time we're all doing a lot of things that we think we have to do, right? 
because maybe we read it on a blog or an article or a podcast or because we saw some other artist doing something. We say, hey, I, I should do that. But the truth is, as, it, as I said at the head of the webinar, everybody's career path is different today. So I'm going to give you right here a little journaling technique that we teach in New Artist Model that you can use to sort your schedule out. I want you to make a list of all the things that you do for the next week. Start today and just make a list. The rest of today and tomorrow for a week. And in a week, I want you to look back over your list. Really look at it. And I want you to cross out unnecessary items that aren't making a difference and aren't related to your goals that you first typed in here at the beginning of the webinar. You want to start cutting these things out of your schedule, things that are just wasting your time, because it that's literally what they're doing, wasting your time if it's not getting you toward your goal. Next, I want you to star, put a little star next to the things that you really enjoy, the things that make you want to get up in the morning, the things that are working for you, and things that are directly related to your goal. These starred items are things that you want to focus 80% of your energy on because these are the things that are going to give you the biggest bang for your buck and it's going to keep you excited about music. So recognize them and honor them. Then I want you to circle the things that aren't exactly fun to do, but you know that they're necessary. You know, and it might be stuff, maybe you hate doing social media or writing your emails to your fans or paperwork or submissions or applications or updating your website, whatever it is. You know, the boring stuff that you don't really want to do, but you know is important. These circled items, these are things that you only need to focus 20% of your energy on. You don't want to go down the rabbit hole with some of these things because they can waste days or weeks of your time. And that's when you start feeling your momentum fizzle right away. Now, of course, one thing you can do with these circled items is to delegate them to your team members. And building a team is something that we spend a lot of time on in New Artist Model, but honestly, that's for another day. But delegation of these circled items is, is a way to kind of clear them off your plate, let you focus on the things that are really, really important to you and motivate you and still get things done. 